Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I welcome every, I welcome every one of us here to today's program, which is brought to you by the Nigerian Southwest Brothers Student Committee, tagged procrastination a big enemy of success. I pray Allah make the program easy and successful. I mean. Open University present a public enlightenment program tagged procrastination, a big enemy of success. Speaker, Sheikh Barista Idris Ibrahim Allah. Next slide. Next slide. About, about IOU. The International Open University, IOU, is a pioneer in online education founded in 2001 by the world renowned scholar, Islamic scholar, Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Felix. IOU provides accredited undergraduate and postgraduate certificates diplomas and degrees in Islamic studies, Arabic and Islamized modern subjects like psychology, business and education. Its mission is to make authentic Islamic and Islamized modern education readily available and affordable to the world. Its vision is to be the global beacon of authentic Islamic and Islamized education nurturing leaders who inspire positive change in diverse communities worldwide. Why, why should you enroll at IOU today? Online, how you offer this program, which is fully online. You study via the internet, anytime at your own convenience time anywhere, changing location, geographical location, which you are, doesn't matter when it comes to study with IOU, Islamized. Every program of IOU is being taught, is being taught from Islamic perspective, affordable. The program, the program, the tuition fees at IOU is affordable by many, accredited, programs offered at this university is accredited by, by NACO and other organizations. Accreditation, Ministry of Higher Education, The Gambia, the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology in the Republic of the Gambia granted the International Open University a license to operate an online university in 2014. Also, another body, National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority, the Gambia. The National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority, NACO, granted the International Open University institutional and program accreditation for its bachelor's and master's degrees starting in 2019. Let me introduce to you the speaker of today, Sheikh Barista Idris Ibrahim Allah, employment profile, lecturer at the Department of Islamic Law, College of Law, Fountain University, Osogo, Nigeria. Dawa Initiative, Executive Director, Dawa Initiative for Rectitude and Development, Dean Raj, Translation Enterprise, is the CEO, Al Idris Hub for Studies and Translations, Ilori, Nigeria, Educational Consultancy, Director, Quality Edu Concert, Ilori, Nigeria, Academic and Professional Qualification, 
Sheikh Barrister Idris Ibrahim Alao received a master's, master's of law at the university. Masters of Islamic Law, class with distinction, Barrister at Law, Council of Legal Education, 2017, LLB, Combined Law, Common and Islamic Law, Unilong, 2015. Before we proceed, I would like, before we hand the mic to the speaker, I would like to invite the chairperson in person of Brother Bashir to recite the glorious Quran for us in five minutes. Assalamu oh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث وارباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء إن الله على كل شيء قدير ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها وما يمسك فلا مرسل له بعد وهو العزيز الحكيم يا أيها الناس اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والأرض لا إله إلا هو فأنا تتفكون وَإِنْ يُكَذِّبُوكَ فَقَدْ كُذِّبَتْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْ قَبَلِكَ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ يُرَنَّكُمْ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يُرَنَّكُمْ لِلَّهِ الْغَرِيمِ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعي الذين كفروا لهم عذاب شديد والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير أفمن زين له سوء عمله فرآه حسنا 
Introduce the speaker of today, in person of Sheikh Barrister Idris Ibrahim Alal. Over to you, speaker, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa mawala. All praise is due to Allah. <coughs> Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his divine peace and blessings onto his uh, respected companions and all those who follow their footsteps from among the Tabi'in and the Atba'u Tabi'in. We ask Allah to count us among those who follow their footsteps to the day of reckoning. I greet you all, my audience, my brothers and sisters in Islam, in that best form of greeting by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I I don't know. Is I, I try to put on the video. Are we? Oh, there's no need because it's not showing here. Maybe it has been. There. We, can, we, we can see the video here. May I can see it here? Uh, okay, but I'm not. I'm not seeing myself. That's surprising. Okay, it's viewable. We can see you very well. Uh, <laughs> see that, that that looks somehow strange. People see me, I can't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I think that's how that's how it's being programmed by Zoom. Now, what did you say? I think that's how it's been programmed by Zoom. By Zoom. No, Alhamdulillah, I can I can see I can see the video now. Okay. 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 I understand. Maybe because we are also doing the projection anyway. Um, the I we want to start on the note of appreciation to the organizer of this event, the IOU Nigerian Southwest Brother Student Committee. I sincerely want to appreciate the this body comprising of our respected brothers who have shown their determination to further promote Islam in their own little way and in their own domain. Uh, in the last one week, this event ought to have been held last week, but for one reason or the other, we couldn't hold it then. But even at that, the organizer was still reaching out and we had to agree for another day, which is today. We really thank Allah for making this a possibility. May Allah reward all our brothers for this effort. I mean, my dear brothers and sisters who are with us this particular moment, the topic before us, because of our time, has, has been announced and as we have seen it in various social media platforms is procrastination, procrastination. There's a R, the second R in the, in the word is missing. The word is spelled as P-R-O-C, 
A S T I N A T I O N. Procrastination, a big enemy of success. And then this the program itself is a public alignment program series. Now, we are aware of the topic and we shall be taking this slide further. So, the first slide. Our outline is very simple. We have just about about seven items comprising of the introduction. What is procrastination? Is procrastination a natural inclination? Then the procrastination circle itself, because it has a circle. How procrastination affects success, and that is the means of our discussion today. Then we have tips on how to overcome procrastination. And finally, the last item before the conclusion is the efficacy of our. Now, the next slide. As far as procrastination is concerned, we can't agree. It is like what you find everywhere. You see, the find this issue of procrastination is is commonplace. It's not peculiar. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Well, good salam it seems the, the the mic from your hand is, is cracking. I don't know if the network is in your side is not strong. Okay. Well, how about how about now? Is it clear? Yes, it's better now. It's better now. Okay, okay, no problem. Thank you for that. Yeah. So like I was saying, uh we need to start by asking ourselves an important question. Who among us does not procrastinate? This question is very important because of some of the things we are going to discuss as we proceed. Procrastination. In fact, in our daily life, procrastination has become part of our daily activity, daily behavior. It seems the, the problem is still there. Probably it's a network problem. So the, the, the sound from your end is, is a bit uh, unstable. Okay, let me let's see if it will improve. Uh, you can help us to move closer to the mic. You can help us to move closer to the mic. Maybe you are far away from it. And it's not that far. It's not that far. Yes, it's okay now. Yeah. Now that you are you are closer. Okay, is it is it cool like this? Yes, it is. Okay. In our in our daily lives, we we can't do without it. We at some point in time we would have to say this thing I do We are also faced with this as humans, as workers, we are faced with the problem of procrastination. So, I can share. We can hear your call. Hello. Hello. Hello, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Can I continue? Yes, you can, but along 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 the while if you talk for a while, the thing will change. We can we can see okay. if there will be some improvement. So like I was saying, okay, the issue of procrastination is even more telling in the academia because as lecturers and students, we have so many tasks before us that we cannot shy away from. 
And for that reason, we will have to prioritize. And that's more that I can't do this now. I have to spend it till, the, till some other time. So we may not be able to, because since it is part of us, then we, we must learn how to deal with it. Learning how to relate with it is imperative for all of us. Since we cannot avoid it, we cannot eliminate it, then it is imperative for us to do what? To know how to deal with it. In fact, one may see procrastination as an opportunity that should be recognized and which could spur one into action. Yes. For me, I can't count the number of times I've been faced with the challenge of having to procrastinate In fact, on a daily basis. Yet, there are times where, when, by, by, there are times where one, where one decides to take that courage to do the right thing, that you'll be, you'll discover that you will eventually succeed in doing the right thing at the right time. This is true, as you will have to pick yourself up to adopt the right approach to deal with procrastination. And that is the solution to it. And that is spurring one into action that I mentioned in the preceding line. You have to pick yourself up. You have many assignments at hand that you have been pending. You, there's an assignment of about six weeks that you have been given, that you have to submit. I'm aware that many students who are, many IU students, or let me say all IU, IU students, submit their assignment via the, uh, via the virtual mode. So, and you are usually given maybe six weeks or eight weeks, as the case may be, to turn in your assignment. So when you fail to, you fail to do it on the, on the first week, second week, third week, fourth week, and you realize that if you fail to submit at the expected time, the, it has consequences. You will not get the full mark, even if, even if your, answer, your answers are correct, and even if you score very high on plagiarism test. By, by scoring high, I mean that you have a very clean record of not plagiarizing your work. But that, that alone will not speak for you. You will still be penalized for submitting it. So when you discover that you have just two weeks to go, or a week, or even three days, then at that point, you must know that this is the time to pick yourself up and tidy up your assignment and turn it in expected. So our uh, takeaway here is that procrastination is a universal human struggle. At the height of it, as a challenge, it can rob one of success. Hence, the topic, procrastination, a big enemy of success. Yes, it can help someone of success, and I'll just give you an hint of how, it, how that can happen. Instead of having a very good continuous uh, assessment mark of 40 or 30, as the case may be, for students in our institution, you may end up getting something lower. And, and that is even uh, on, the mild, on the mild level. Because like I said here, yeah, while it's my consequences or consequence will be disorganization, the ability to prioritize, failure to achieve small goals, either on a daily or weekly basis. These are like mild consequences. There are bigger consequences, which is losing success, which is failure. And as we proceed in this presentation, an example is going to be, I'm going to give an, an example to illustrate how that uh, occurs. So we may, as we proceed, we'll be using an example of academics, but I want us to think and start even relating the lessons we'll, we'll take from this uh, presentation today to our personal lives. How some of us may have lost in the past, may have, could have lost an, a, a lifetime opportunity or a very critical achievement just because we have been procrastinating, we have been procrastinating, we have been procrastinating. So next slide. But the word procrastination itself should interest us. What do we mean by that word procrastination itself? To say you are procrastinating means that you are leaving smack in the middle of the land of should. Uh, I should have done this. Uh, I should have done that. And when has a should ever served anyone? That is another question. When you say should, should, you are only impressing upon yourself with a moral obligation to have done something. Somebody is saying,
a problem. Maybe it's peculiar to the to the to the particular. Right now, when I should be doing that, you are putting yourself down at the day. against each other, against each other. You are battling with yourself, which will only deplete you and shut you down. You see, it's like somebody who is caught in between two, in between two towers. Somebody who is in the dilemma. And this is what many of us go, go through, especially those of us who are in the university system, that we have more than enough. We already have more than enough in our uh, before us on our table. So... We now start, we have the challenge, many people have the challenge of having to prioritize because you have so many deadlines. And when then when you have so many deadlines, you begin to consider which is to come first among the series of assignments uh, that is before you. In Arabic, procrastination is represented by the word tesweef. Tesweef, is, tesweef itself is a derivative of the word sulfur, which means soon or later. And you remember that the word so far reflected in verse of the Holy Quran. Al Hakum Takathur, as we live in Shaitan Rajiv, Allah mentioned Al Hakum Takathur, Hatta Zur Tumul Makabir, Kalla Safa Ta'alam, Summa Kalla Safa Ta'alam. See the word Safa. Yes, Allah was talking about events. Events that will happen after this, this word. Allah is talking about what is going to become of us after we leave this world. Allah says, Kalla Safa Ta'alam. Soon, nay, you know. Safa, soon, you know. Summa Kalla Safa Ta'alam. Again, very soon you will know. So the word Safa is, suggests doing something at a later time or something occurring at a later time. So in simple terms, it is the habit of delaying tax or decisions, often for trivial reasons, leading to a sense of guilt and unfulfillment. You will see as we proceed how this can cause sense of guilt, especially by the time we start looking at the procrastination circle. It will be very clear to us how dangerous procrastination can be. But before we get there, what we need to know now is that many a times, when we procrastinate, at the time you decide to pick yourself up to do the right thing, you, re you realize that the question that comes to your mind is, what is, the, what is that thing that has been taking, uh, that has been holding me, holding me back from doing this thing? I have more than enough examples in my own personal life to illustrate with. There have been many assignments on my table that I have been procrastinating. Some will be for months. Some is their self-imposed assignment, so I did not even give myself a particular deadline. And for that reason, some of them remain on my table, on my list for several months, some more than six months, some nine months. But the day I take that courage, I took that courage to say, no, I want this thing to be done. I would just realize that within an hour or two, I've been able to accomplish that task. Then the question I'll be asking myself is, then what is that thing that, is, that, has, been, uh, that has been holding me back all this while for several months? without accomplishing it, this tax. And that is to tell you that many a times our reason for procrastinating is what it are very are, are, are very trivial. They are what we call three fruits. Things that when we assess ourselves, we will not also be convinced that we have been delaying that assignment just because of this reason. Now, imagine if you have been procrastinating certain assignment or tax and the consequences are, so, are, are very grave or you miss some opportunities. Imagine what that would mean for your career. Imagine what that would mean for your growth. Imagine the, what, that would, what that would mean for your personal development. On the personal level, on the personal note, I remember in some years back, some courses I had Take, uh, taking the decision that I'm going to pursue, I was going to pursue, but for one reason or the other, I was not so determined 
to pursue those courses. And given the economic situation in the nation, gradually the cost, the cost of pursuing the courses was, was increased year in, year out to a point where I had to take the whole decision to say, I have to pursue this course at this particular time. But at the rate, different from the rate it was about five years or so ago. So the lesson here is that it is very dangerous. This guilt can be very devastating and that of, and the same as the sense of unfulfillment. This is just was that even in the Arabic Islamic parlance, there's a word for procrastination, which is the swift, which is derived from the word sulfur. And it is for us to know that, yes, much as it is in English, it is also in the Arabic Islamic too. The next slide, please. Having said that, in the pre in the introduction to our discussion, we have said that procrastination is a general problem. It's not peculiar to, to any it's, it's not peculiar, it's peculiar to it. it should have given given us an int or a or a int that ah, procrastination is a natural inclination. However, we we'll look at this in the context of Islam as a phenomenon that is procrastination, as a phenomenon that everyone unites on. Procrastination is a natural inclination. It is a universal human struggle. Everyone deals with it one way or the other. That is given. However, as Muslims, we find in the glorious Quran a confirmation of human tendency to procrastinate. Allah says to Surah al verse 23 to 24, And never say of anything, indeed, I will do that tomorrow. Except when adding, if Allah wills. Our reference here is the common saying, I will do this today, and after to, I will do this tomorrow, and after tomorrow, I will do this, I will do it the next day, and the cycle of procrastination does what it, it continues. So the point we are taking from this is that much as we are I'm proceeding with this presentation, I'm sure many of us are now casting our mind back about some of the things we have done in the past, some of the things we have procured, many things we have left undone. And how that has caused some uh, not too good feeling for us. Now we are now remembering the pain is now coming. Yes, this is to let us know that it is natural for us to procrastinate and we can't do without it. Alas, let us know through this verse. But again, this verse, we shall refer to it again towards the end of this uh, presentation because there are some important lessons again that we must share uh, with us. But before we leave this slide, the message here is that let us be at rest. Let us feel comfortable. We must be rest. The only thing we need is that we have to be resolute about the decision we take, but that we can't do away with procrastination. It is something that is in it. And that's why we can see that in the, in the, in the verse in Surah al Allah made it clear that it is in the nature of human being to be saying things like, ah, I, will do, I will do something tomorrow. I will do this next tomorrow. It is in our nature. But again, Allah admonishes us on what to do. We should always say, Illa ayya The word insha Allah, we should always say, because we are not the owner of ourselves. We are not the owner of ourselves. Remember the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, I think it is one of the sayings of the companion. I don't think it's, an, it's a hadith. Uh, it is the statement of Omar. Or that of Abdullah ibn Umar, one of the two. Uh, if, uh, if, I, if I get the, if my memory serves me right, uh, if you wake up in the morning, you are able to see a new day. Do not expect that. Yes, the way you woke up and you are seeing a new day is the way you are going to see the evening of that day. Whether I'm saita, and if you are able to see the evening, do not assume that it will be automatic for you to see the next day. So, to let us know that all our uh, in the hands of the one who disposes, who is the who is the disposer of all affairs, and that's so that we can take caution and we can uh, do some left some back about our daily actions and inactions. Next slide, please.
Yes. This is the procrastination circle. I mentioned. You see, look at the way it starts. It will start from the word procrastinate. Start from the word procrastinate. Look at the arrow. The arrow is moving uh, clockwise. When you procrastinate, you don't take any effort. You do not make any effort to pick yourself up and attend to that task. What happens as time goes on is you start feeling guilty. Yes. Oh, this assignment, I ought to have done it. At this particular, uh, I mean, work, how to have delivered, delivered it for my, how to have delivered it for my client or to my client. This particular assignment, how to have turned it in for my boss, for my mentor. And like that, the, the guilt continues. You understand? And like I used to say, as a personal, uh, drawing from my own personal experience, as a, as a man who by divine design, I'm privileged to have so many bosses. And I used to say that uh, there's no free time or there's no uh, no free space or no free time for a man who, with many orgasms at the top. Yes. And you cannot imagine our sense of guilt <laughs> over us around me all the time. Because <laughs> I don't have a particular free period to say, oh, to, oh, this week or this month, I'm completely free. No. If I once know I'm done with that assignment, I have another assignment. Some are already on ground, not yet attended to for weeks, some months. So you can imagine. So I always have that feeling of guilt. That ah, why, why am I doing why why am I doing this? Why am I like this? How to have turned in this assignment? And at the same time, even my own personal assignment too also face the same challenge because it is the same 24 hours that I have that every other person in the world, including the US president, who is believed to be the most busiest uh, person on earth, also has. So I within these 24 hours, I have to attend to some other personal things. I will eat, I will use the washroom, I will speak to people, whether at work, whether at home, I will also have my time with my Lord. I will have to observe my solar watch. I have to say my car within these 24 hours. So I, I necessarily I have to rest too. And yet the assignment remains, uh, the assignment remains daunting. And like our scholars in Islam have said, al wajibat akhtar al-awkot. Tax, assignment, and duties are so enormous. They are so much more than the hours, the time we have. So that is to give us. A, a an important message that except we are just up and doing and we are hitting the ground running, it's difficult to be able to attend to all assignments or all tasks before us. And as we grow in life, some of these things continue to mount. You would think as an undergraduate, you would think that, ah, you don't have time for things at all. And I remember those days in the university especially at the University of Learning, where one was really immersed in extracurricular activities to a point that I participated in a uh, union of uh, campus journalists. Activity, another course, uh, a course of study for me, just like I was admitted to study common and Islamic at the University of Lund. Then we are saying that we are busy, we are busy, we don't have time. Now, after leaving the university, and we are faced with work-life situation, family life situation, balancing between work life, work and life, between the work, and also this. One is now, more 
You also have your own schedule of duties. Whether you are into business, your client, they will know. You know those times you have to uh, you have to be in the office. You know those times you have to be in your store. You know those times you have to resume as a matter of being responsive to your business or your line of activity or career. You know those times you have to be present and you must show up either on a daily basis or weekly or fortnightly. And even if you don't have physical business or physical activity you do, many of us now will now work remotely. You know, when you have to turn in some assignment, you may be inside your home, have the whole 24 hours, but you know that out of that 24 hours, maybe you only have the grace of sleeping for eight hours because the assignment you have to do on your system or your laptop are so enormous and your principal are waiting for you. So the feeling of guilt, one cannot escape, uh, cannot escape it. Once you give in to procrastination, the necessary thing that follows is that you, the feeling of guilt will have to over around you. Then what follows is panic. You start panicking. After feeling of guilt, when it is time for you to submit that assignment, when it is time for you to deliver that project and you fail, then it, that guilt becomes panic. You, you, you are now becoming worried. You'll be looking for escape route. You'll be looking for all possible means through which you can successfully achieve what you ought to have done far before that time. And what follows? And when you are now being challenged, why are you now doing this at this time? You now start giving excuses. This is what happened. This is fine. We understand that we are in a nation where things are not working properly. The challenge of bad road, the challenge of electricity, challenge of uh, uh, no water, and so many challenges. They also have their own uh, implications on many of our activities too. It is understandable, but we are talking on a general note. And we, I don't think it is a good thing that one should be in the habit of uh, always giving excuses. So that is an approach. Another approach is for us to look at the, pro, the, the pro procrastination, procrastination circle anti-clockwise. When you procrastinate, you know, the first one was that we, we took it by, we took it clockwise. So feeling guilt, panic, and making excuses. It can also be anti-clockwise too. When you procrastinate, why you procrastinate? You start giving excuse. I can't attend to it now. The, ta the, the tax is difficult. It requires me to give it more time. And there, will, there, won't, be ever, there, will, there won't ever be a time that you can say, yes, this time is, is free completely for this particular tax. So it is from no time that you create time, as people say. So when you start procrastinating, the next thing is that anytime you remember the duty or that assignment or activity, you start giving yourself excuses, excuses to console yourself, to validate your procrastination. Uh, I, I understand what I've done it, but you see, it's not. Uh, I'm not uh, you know, the situation. The the situation in the country. I mean, it's difficult. Uh, there's no light. I can't keep myself. Like people say, I have to bear with. This is. I will tell them. They have to understand. Yes, that is one. Then from that, when you see that the deadline has come, you start panicking. You start panicking, you start getting agitated, getting worried, and guilt will now also end it. Because that guilt, that feeling of guilt can remain for, for long. Panic may be temporary, but feeling of guilt may remain for long, even many years, even many years after that opportunity has been missed, and some other things has replaced it for you. You still feel that pain that it will have not, it will, it will not have cost you anything if you have attended to it, if you have picked yourself up to attend to that particular thing or opt for that particular uh, option or take that particular step. Perhaps you, that guilt you are feeling today will, won't be there. How many, how many of such guilt will still recall in our personal life still today? So this is one thing I want all of us to take note of, that once you procrastinate, these are some of the consequences that will befall you. And you know, like the topic is about procrastination, a big enemy of success. So people who are not pursuing success as they should, when some of these things happen, it inevitably leads to failure. That is what it means. And success will not be your companion as a result. So the cumulative implication 
of many of these things, many of the, the three items we have uh, boldly highlighted in this circle is for us to know that to lead us to what? To failure. And that means that success has now been snatched away from us and we seek our last refuge against that. So next slide, let's quickly illustrate that circle with, uh, with, uh, with the academic life of students in university, especially as our organizer, uh, our group of students, uh, the a group of students from uh, IO International Open University. So our procrastination affects success. Let's illustrate with the procrastination circle. A student who procrastinates his daily or weekly private studies will make several excuses to justify his action. And by the time semester is halfway and continuous assessment test draws near, guilt starts to set in. And finally, when procrastination persists and the semester exam approaches, it is still panic in the mind of such students. This way, this way, it will not be in good state of mind to ace the exams as failure looms due to poor preparation. We can apply this to other aspects of our daily lives. Yes, all of us, we are passed through the, the primary school, the secondary school, and even the university. Some of us are still presently doing our undergraduate programs. And some of us, we are at the postgraduate level, pursuing one master's or the other, or doing one professional course or the other. You now see this example that I've given. But you, you can all conveniently recall those exams we wrote when we are not well prepared and we are panicking when to do the examination part. We can recall conveniently how we were anxious to see the result of such exams and how we were so joyous when it eventually ended for us, even in E or D, insofar as we did not add, we did not carry it over to the next year. If we give the, if you give, if you, if you uh, open the floor for uh, comments, I'm sure many of us will have so many examples to give. Some of us will be so lucky and be very happy where when such courses uh, end up, uh, where we end up having C in such courses, even much more than some courses that we had A, because we knew that those ones we had A or B, we knew that we prepared very well. But for those ones we did not prepare very well and still we are still lucky to end up getting something in the average like C or maybe fear like D, we'll still be happy because we do not want to uh, write it again with our juniors. Those of us, who, those I mean, those who are coming after us in the lower levels. So this is a practical illustration of our pro procrast procrastination cues. The academic uh, uh, ingenuity of students. And going forward, I want to believe that we will do as much as possible to avoid these things recurring, not only in our academic life, also in our personal lives. Yes, the next slide. Tips on how to overcome procrastination. By now, all of us, we are consensus added them. In other words, we are in agreement that yes, procrastination is a big enemy of success. And if it is not tamed, if we do not find something to something to do to tackle it headlong, it may lead us to failure. So, what are the possible tips through which we can get out of this difficult situation? The first is tawakul, trust in Allah. You remember the verses of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ يَعْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَوَّ حَسْبُ That is where I'm going. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَوَّ حَسْبُ Whosoever relies upon Allah, فَوَّ حَسْبُ Allah will be sufficient for him. So, to combat the challenge of procrastination, we must know that we need tawakul. It is the very first thing. Tawakul is, is very key. Let's trust Allah that is going to make us surmount the challenge. Whatever assignment, whatever task we have, let's pray over it and face it. And we'll see that Allah in his, in his, magna, in his magnanimity, in his sheer benevolence, make it easy. And how many of times 
that I have had cause to call on Allah on many tasks that I found uh, that I perceive to be difficult and Allah will make it so easy for me. In fact, as a matter of my practice, as a, my, it is my practice, I try to make dua in my prayers, in my salawat. At times I make nawafil to ask Almighty Allah to help me simplify a particular tax I want to I want to face, I want to undo. And the result has been very wonderful. I can tell you, it's a testimony I'm, I'm free to share with you. The results have been very over, wonderful over the years. I can't count so many examples of times I, I will almost cry, asking Allah to make it easy for me. Especially that in the academics, you can't do without writing. My life is around writing. And you, to write, you have to be inspired. You can be sitting down in front of the laptop, just looking without being able to do anything. So it is when you realize that you can't do it alone. You can't do it. It is only Allah that can do it. And that's where you now know how, tawak how having tawakul is very key to your success. So, and alhamdulillah, I'm recommending it for us to let's increase our level of trust in Allah. And anytime we are challenged intellectually or in any other way, let's always put our trust in Allah. That is the only one that can overcome it for us. This is of the Muslim tradition. And we are, as Muslims, we cannot be away, we can't do away with our tradition. It is what makes us, makes us unique from the pack. So remember all the times that our fears lies, our fears lie with Allah. We cannot single-handedly proceed to do anything without him. And that's the even the old lessons of La Haula. That's the old lessons, or that's the old the meat. The essence of the prayer, La Haula wa la quwata illa billah. Eh? What the word La Haula wa la quwata illa billah means is that eh? La Haula li wa la quwata li illa biki. Or atabarra min haulika, min hauli, astagfirullah lazim, atabarra min hauli wa quwati ila haulika wa quwati. What it means, la haula wa la quwata means is that you are declaring your perplexity. You are de declaring your weakness. You are declaring how very inconsequential that you are before Allah, your creator, that you can't do anything except through him. And you should understand this very much. When Professor Salaf described the mighty word, la haula wa la quwata la billah, he said, kenzu min kunuzu li jannah. It is a treasure of the many treasures in the Jannah. So let us endeavor to always say La Hawla wa la quwata la billah. Because in doing so, our path will be very clear. I will start the high chance to be successful in whatever we lay our hearts on. Yes, the next point is set clear goals. Set clear goals. We really need to cultivate the habit of setting clear goals. Yes, it may be very challenging because we have so many goals. We have so many goals. At our workplace, there are some goals we have. In our personal development life, we have certain goals too. So goals, we have to now start looking at how do we evaluate them? Yes, let your goals be smart. Let it be specific. Let it be measurable. Let it be let it be attainable. Let your goal be realistic and let it be time bound. That's the meaning of smart. If you do so, you would see positive change. Now, since we said there are many goals, then there's a need to now bring them. Now, there's a need to now what to break them down. Some goals can be small goals, short-term goals. There are mid-term goals. There are long-term goals. You can't tell me that someone who is in secondary school and who has the dream to become a PhD, to, the dream to become a PhD, that, that having a PhD for him, having a PhD for him is a short-term goal. No, that's a long-term goal. His own short-term goal is now how he's going to what? Ace is why I can echo. Um, perform excellently well in jam to be able to gain admission for his university 
education. So that's the short term, the, the very close one to him. So let's learn to, I mean, I mean, disintegrate or classify our goals as short term, mid term, and long term. Yes, in doing so, we also need to prioritize our task. We have so many tasks before you. We have to prioritize. Especially for many of us that we have so many things we do together. Many of us that we are multi multitasker. Uh, the other time, the anchor was saying, uh, I have uh, educational consultancy initiative. I have a translation enterprise. I have a DAWA initiative. I have uh, what other uh, my employment profile. I work with Fountain University. And all these things, one has to prioritize. And a very good way to illustrate is when in the month of Ramadan, and when Ramadan is drawing near, even though you may not see me doing any short reminders outside Ramadan, yes, because I know I may not have the time. But when Ramadan is coming, I have to create that time to do Ramadan series, Ramadan lecture series. So it's also a form of prioritization that, okay, even if it is once in a year, that I'll be doing short reminder videos. I want it to be in Ramadan. And even this year, we were challenged. It was difficult. We could not have the, the videos out at the beginning of Ramadan, but I'm delighted the videos are now coming out now. We are still in Ramadan. So we are still happy that that aim of prioritizing the goals, breaking it down into tasks, uh, was still achieved. So I'm using that to illustrate with. Again, set deadlines for yourself. That's another one. Set deadlines for yourself and stick to it. That's another very good way to deal with procrastination. The video man or media producer has been on my neck since around Drojab, we have been discussing. But because of my official responsibilities and other things connected to it and other translation and research consultancy work, that's been very difficult for me to spare time in Raja. And in Shaban, the same experience until about 10 days to Ramadan, if I'm not mistaken, or a week, that we were able to do the pre-recorded videos. So, because I had to decide that if I did not get it done in this last one week of Shaban, it would be extremely difficult for us to have anything out there in Ramadan. So, I gave myself that courage to say, no, in the, whatever I've read or prepared should be enough for this purpose. And since, like I've said, I was worried because I used to see myself as if I've not prepared enough. Even for this lecture, if you ask me, I'll still be thinking I've not, I've not prepared enough. I like I used to tell people who are close to me, if you delay anything because of me, probably you won't be able to do anything. And I remember in the university, when the, when, when the exam timetables are out, I'll be among those people who will be complaining that, ah, why, did, why didn't the university give us one more week? Why didn't the university give us a few days? And in those institutions where we have some extension of two days, or maybe there's a change, there's some alteration in the timetable, I'll still be very happy that, hey, I'll have the lie. We now have a grace of two additional days or three days. Only for me to be complaining when that day, when those days come again, I'll still be complaining as if I'm still looking for more, uh, more, more time. So the point is, if you think, if I continue to complain, as if I've not done enough, it means that maybe I won't be able to do anything. But because of the need to set deadline and pick oneself up that this must be done, and at this time, I will just resort to praying to Almighty Allah that, ربي اني ظلمت ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا كبيرا ولا يكفر الذنوب الا انت فاغفر لي مغفره من عندك وارحمني انك انت الغفور الرحيم انا ما بين ابو تو دو اس اكسبكتد اي دو نوت اي دو نوت كونسيدر ماي سيلف تو هاف ميشرد اب تو دي ريكوايرد ستاندرد فور ذيس بارتيكولار ثينغ بت او الله تراي اس او الله بليز هيلب مي بيرفكت وات ايفر امبرفكشن از ان ماي ايفورت اند باي ذا تايم ذا ثينغ از اوت by the time the, the, whatever that assignment is done, it will not look as if it's something 
that has been that has been in the in the offing or that has been in the doing for several months. And when people start seeing it, say, ah, what's a very good thing. But within me, I know that uh what I did that it was like Roy Roy Guru to the answer. Maybe I just paid maybe a few hours to do it. But because I prayed to Almighty Allah to come to my aid. But it is so Allah now made it appear as if it is something I've been doing for a very long time. And that's why any success, I need to give you another hint there. Any success you are able to accomplish, always return it to Allah, or return all the glory to Almighty Allah. All the glory are there. Act. Let it be. Don't don't. When I say this, I'm not saying that you should. You should not. I, I mean, you should. You should be saying it. No. Let it reflect the way you are saying. Let it reflect as such in your heart that it is not you. Because who are you? What can you do? So return it to Allah. Don't forget that Allah says that Allah All that you do, your creation and all that you do. I had the doing of the Almighty Allah. So the Obas the Obas will say that and to and to the rule level. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much, sir. Running out of time, so we have less than thirty minutes. Thirty minutes for the lecture now. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you for drawing my attention. The Obas will say that and to the rule level. He was the even in, in, in slavery, if you have a slave, you can do as you like with that slave. Because you are the owner of the slave, and you can command him to do whatever you want him to do. So don't arrogate any success to yourself. Return all glory, all success to Almighty Allah. That way, more things will become easier for you. The next thing is make consistency your habit. This is a very big thing. To be consistent, to develop consistency as a habit, it's a big challenge. If, okay, a good way to illustrate this, how many of us, many of us as Muslims, we are still not consistent with starting our prayers at the beginning of Salat, at the beginning of the sale of Tatbiratul Ihram with the Imam. If we take the statistics, you discover that many of us are still far behind. In achieving that. Of course, many of us may have been able to achieve observing Salat at its, at its time. Because there's the, early, the earlier time, there's the earliest time, there's the later time, uh, earlier and later times. But ensuring that you observe it at the earlier, at the earlier time, the first time, how well it worked. And also ensuring that you observe it in the first throne with the Imam, Saint Akbar, Iram, consistently like that. We all know that we are still battling with it. We ask Allah to make us achieve it before we return to him. So the message there is that making consistency a habit is difficult. But of course, it can only be achieved by practicing it. And to practice it is to work towards actualizing it because that's the only, that's the only way you can deal with procrastination. Even our Askar, the saying of Askar Soba al Masa, many of us, we have not been able to develop a, a habit around it. That after Salat to Subi, I must remain where I observe my Salat to see it. Or while I'm going to school or going to work, I have to research, I chant it. If I did not chant it, I must not do anything at my workplace except I have done that. So this takes us to the next point, self-control and discipline. To achieve consistency, you need self-control and discipline. Some things you have to say no to them. I've read books about how about the habit of successful people and one thing is the courage to always say no and for me i had some challenge in saying no at some point in my post university life after my national service when i started when i ventured into translation ventured into some other things people mentors would say okay do this do this do this and because of the reverence I have for them, I won't be able to say no. Even people who are colleagues, they also require, require my service. I won't, be, I, won't, I won't be able to say no. Until I got to a point where I started, I started experiencing burnout. 
burnout is a psychological uh, condition that things becomes uninteresting to you. You don't feel like attending to duties as they come. You feel you, you lost the old essence. The, you lost the old essence of even working in the first place. That was what I experienced some few years back. And in getting once back on the track, I did some personal evaluation. I also discussed it with some of my mentors. And they told me that, they, told, they shared with me that I need to watch my tax. The enormity of my tax are what they say contributes to it. If the tax, if tax are too enormous, there's possibility of experiencing burnout. And that burnout, failure to, if you don't have, once you have burnout, you won't have even that self-control. You everything, you just lose interest. So the point I'm trying to say here is that we should try as much as possible to always control and discipline ourselves. And in other words, so that if you discipline us, if you discipline ourselves, that's the only way we can we can be able to shield ourselves against burnout. Saying no to people. People who are in the habit of coming to encroach your time. You must develop a system to say, no, this time is for this particular activity. And one thing I just discovered is that many people just have, they just form an habit around, they just form an opinion around me. That opinion is that, ah, it's very busy. You, you may not have your time. And I'll have that alone. That alone in itself is a form of regulation, even before people get to me. They already have the impression that I'm busy. So if I spare my time, if I spare my time for them, they will appreciate it because they know that the time is, is life and they know the kind of things that are before me. So let's try as much as possible to develop the attitude of saying no. But of course, it's not in all cases. I have to be very frank with you. It's not in all cases. You have some series of, you have some mentors you can't tell no. In fact, there are some mentors you have to put down your own work to attend to theirs. Because mentorship is about you rub my back and rub your back. This is a fact people don't know. I think I mentioned the issue of get to get mentors at the end. I, I may not elaborate much on that when I get there. Yes, get mentors. It helps a lot. So mentorship is about with a win-win situation. So, so there are some mentors you can't tell no. And I have some of them like that. I have to attend to the assignment. And they know within them that once the assignment is before me, I will leave whatever I'm doing to attend to them. Yes, a time will come, I will also need them too. And despite their own busy schedule too, they have to attend to me. So it's a win-win situation. Don't go into mentorship with, with empty contribution. You don't have anything to... Uh, and uh, don't be in the habit of floating people's name, calling them mentor, where you know you, are, you have nothing you are giving back to him. So he also needs you. He is at the top. There are some things he won't be able to do that are now below. They are below him. You are below him. You are just rising. There are some things you have to be picking for him and stretching your hand to give it to him. That's the way life is. So and by the time you are also going, the world, he will now he will now be the one to take you up. By the time you get up to some people are also waiting. They know you can. You won't be able to come down. You need them, and, and, and it continues. The next point is seek inspiration from the lives of the prophets and his companions. Yes, life of the prophets, and uh, that is supposed to be in brackets so that we can interpret it to mean prophets of all, all prophets of Almighty Allah, and also Prophet Muhammad and his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ala sahaba, wa ala ala sahaba So let's read about the lives of the prophets life of his companions. We have so many things to learn from them uh, so that we can adapt to our own daily lives too. And reward yourself after accomplished tasks. To avoid burnout, to avoid getting tired, always reward yourself. Try to reward yourself. How do you do that? For the little thing you do, even if it is as much as going to unwind, 
you have been in the front of your laptop working for hours, and after you have been able to accomplish something, stand up, take a walk. You can even on the TV, watch some documentary on the Slam channel, or watch some news, and then revert, I mean, return back to to the to the to, to your system to continue. You can even sip some juice. You can take a light refreshment. You can pick up your phone after you have put you have already placed it on the flight mode. Yes, you can now pick up your phone, check WhatsApp, check all your handles, social media handles, reconnect with people for a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and come back again. Yes, you need to reward yourself. You have to develop a very good reward system, but it may not be an elaborate thing. It can be as small as little as some of the things I've mentioned. Kill distractions as much as possible. And this is a very big one for many of us who are millennials. Those of us born in the 80s downward. I'm aware that people who are of Gen Z generation too, some of them may be with us. Distractions is killing. Distraction is killing us. It's, it's as bad as many of us when we are working on our system, we have all our social media handles on. And as notification is dropping, we are checking. It takes it makes us spend more time on the assignment we are doing. So let's look at all possible ways to keep distraction. I'm very dis distraction is especially with social media, is one thing that is that has affected many youth. And even the speaker of today is not totally immune, just like you. So there was a day I was speaking with my mentor, he shared an information which I also share with you. And now we can manage distraction, especially that of social media. He said you should put you should, you should put off all notifications of your social media handles so that they will not drop. Because once they don't drop, you will not follow, you will not follow the link. And since I did it, I have been relieved. I experienced a great relief, a great relief since I've adopted that, that particular uh, advice. So you too, I'm telling you today, after this session, go and put off all your notifications. What that means is that it's only the only the times you only only those times you go and check yourself that you see what is happening. It's not that it is the app that will be telling you where yeah, come and check. So and the last thing is what does happen with dua, and this one will take us to the last slide, which is the efficacy of dua. Efficacy of dua. The dua we are talking about here is a sincere dua made to Almighty Allah. We are not talking of dream dua. The so called dream dua, a dua of empty wish, a dua made not followed up with action. That is dream dua. That's not the kind of dua we are talking about here. Here we are talking about a sincere dua, a passionate appeal made to Almighty Allah, making a request to Almighty Allah that Allah should do what? Should simplify our affairs. And you know, there are many. Uh, 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 that with the tax we handle, yes, there are many examples. Allah ma la sahla illa ma jahalta wa sahla wa anta tajal hasna ila shita sahla. That's one. Oh Allah, there's no ease except what you made easy. You are the only one that made the only. You are the only one that can make grief. Eh? You can make grief, can turn grief rather to ease anytime you want. And there's another prayer too. This one is also very, very important. Allah seek refuge with you from worry and worry, grief. Alham is worry. Alhazan is grief. Wal adzi incapacity. Wal kasal. Wal adzi wal kasal. Incapacity and laziness. Wal bukhli wal jubli. My saliness and cowardice. Wagalabati rijal. And be overpowered by, by other men. So these two at car we need to be saying it. There's another one I remember just now. Yeah, 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 how you yeah for you. Oh, the ever living, the ever powerful. Yeah, how you yeah for you be Robert Castagis. Ah, I seek for it is with your mercy that I'm calling on you. As the Lisha Nikullahu. Perfect all my affairs. While I take it in enough sitor for time. Do not leave me to myself for even a trick of an eye. What a powerful prayer. What a powerful supplication. This theory at card must be constant. In addition to those ones that I mentioned earlier about seeking his tikfar. Rabbana zalamna asfusana wa illam takfirlana wa tarhabna. Tana kuna namna al-khasirin. 
and the dua of Nabi Lai Musa, Lord be, in his lamp mercy, in his lamp mercy, fulfilled. And the one I said earlier that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi recommended for Siddiq of this Ummah, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Alama, in his lamp mercy, Zulman Kathiro. In another narration, it is said that in his lamp mercy, Zulman Kabiro. And so, some scholars like Alima ibn Muslimin, Ali Rahmatullah, said that we can even combine the two. Allah may need the lamp nafsi zulman kathiran kabira wa la yakfiru dhunuba illa at faqfir li maghfiratan min indi warhamni innaka anta al-ghafur rahim So and many other scholars have talked about la hawla la quwata illa billah Let's see all some of these things Again, remember they had, that Aisha al went to complete with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the challenge she faced with domestic cause at home and he was even thinking that maybe the Prophet will encourage him to get a mate that will assist her in doing some of these domestic calls, as we have seen people do in our own time too. Domestic mate. Instead, Prophet Salam advised her to do what to 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 make some adkar at night before she sleep. Subhanallah, tatiri, tatiri times. Alhamdulillah, tatiri, Allah akbar, tatiri times. So, and that's also part of the. At car, we are expected to. I think uh, so by Allah Akbar should be 34 times, if I'm not mistaken. And it's part of the Askar we are supposed to say before we sleep. So that is also one thing we need to put as part of the as part of the dua we are expected to make. And on this note, we come to the end of the presentation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this as genuine act of worship. Let's intensify our prayers much, uh, especially as we are in the month of Ramadan, where prayers are answered. Uh, yeah, thank, it's where we, where, we, where, we, where we draw the curtain. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ash'adu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfuka. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. Allah reward you abundantly. Amen. So, inshallah, we move to the next next order of program, which is the question and answer. So we are going to take two questions from anyone. If you can, you can drop it on the chat box. So if we have any question to ask the lecturer, otherwise we call the program to an end. Question and answer. Okay, so there is a question with me here since we are yet to see any question from outside. So while de delivering the lecture, you mentioned that we, whenever we are using social media platforms, we have to turn off our notifications in order to avoid distractions. And I want to ask, how is that, how is that done? Is it on the, on the social media platform? Let's say WhatsApp, WhatsApp for example, or, or we have to do that on our phone. Is it the phone settings? Jazakumullah khair. Is it my network? I don't, I can't hear you. Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I said, for example, WhatsApp, it has a function where it pops up a message that comes in on the home page of your phone. So if you don't want WhatsApp to always pop uh, pop up message, you just go to the setting. Uh, when you go to the WhatsApp setting, you go and uh, change it such that the message would only drop come inside. I mean, would only drop inside the app. There's another one that it will, the notification draws. I mean, comes in the form of a tree at the top uh, top part of the phone. You can also adjust the setting of WhatsApp to, to, such that the, oh, it's only when you open when you press WhatsApp that you will see the messages. For example, as I'm speaking to you, that's what I use. Uh, no message will drop. Even my SMS too, I don't want anything to drop on my 
on my on the on the on the screen of my phone until I go and check what I have in each okay. of those. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So that means is is a uh, is media media specific. So also we have a question from Brother Bukebi Sakaria who asks whether I think that one is an internal question whether assignment has been given to students or not. So I will just, I think that is not pertaining to the lecturer. So I will just answer that straight away. The assignment questions are yet to be released. So I think it's on the 3rd of April, that is the date they are going to release the assignment questions. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa my own, my, I just want to call the attention of the organizers that you can maybe you should announce to people that if so it's not necessary that people speak out to their questions, you they can write on the comment section. Maybe you have to let people let the other participants know that they can write out their questions on the comment section, not necessarily meaning they have to speak it out. I want to Actually, the question I read out just now was uh, typed on the question and answer platform. So if we have any other question, we are going to take that in the next three minutes. So that we call it a day. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead with your question, please. Okay. Um, Zach, silent for your presentation, sir. So my question is as regards the aspect when you said that you should uh, learn to say no. So um. Uh, the question is now that if you are in a kind of setting, it's a kind of job that you you cannot say no to your superiors. Maybe you are in a military setting or a paramilitary setting. And there are some superiors that will uh, take advantage of the fact that yes, you know something, you do some so task because you can do it, pull you up and uh, tell you it. And you can you can say no to them. Like, I hope you understand what I'm saying. How do you manage that kind of situation? You feel that you don't know it. Is it right to just feel so that you can have your time? Or how do you manage that situation, sir? So, thank you. Uh, I didn't get the question very clearly. Is it that how do you tell people no? Is that the, the question? Is that, is that you said we should learn to say no? Okay. Yes. So I said, if you are a kind of job that you cannot say no to your superiors, you have to follow others. Maybe a military service that you have to just say yes. You can't say no. And okay. there are some of your superiors that take advantage of the fact that you 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 are you are good at some things that they want to do. So they bring all their mostly all, all of their works to you to do them because they know that you can do it. So I'm not saying that in situations, can you feign ignorance? Like, can you tell them that you're not going to, like, you're devaluing yourself? So maybe you just feel that I can't do this one. Even when I can do it, just to have some a bit of your time to yourself. Well, uh, that one is about prioritizing. Uh, you, can't, you can't continue serving people and uh, forget to pursue your own interests. So there's a need to prioritize. And I want to believe that people who are coming will also know that no, 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 no. Uh, he has tried. This is what he's doing. This is what he's doing. He also needs to attend to himself. So there's, there should be, there should be a, 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 I mean, what do we call it? There should be a certain determinant or threshold. There should be a certain threshold to say, I, I won't be able to attend to this thing. But of course, I've given an example of that of people who are boss, bosses or mentors. It's not all of them 
can one say no to? Some of them you have to, you know that you can't tell them no when they give you an assignment. But of course, they won't be all of them. There are some. And of course, some of them are even very merciful. They understand your schedule. They know how to tie out your time and they will appreciate whatever time you spend to do, to do whatever thing they ask you to do. And they will not unnecessarily overburden you because they also know what your schedule is. So each case according will be treated accordingly. Each case will be treated accordingly. But you must not, let me end line by saying you must not, under the guess of wanting to assist people, and lost yourself in the process. Allah, uh, in Surah Tuli Surah, when Allah was talking about spending, he said, well, that, uh, uh, I forgot in the verse, you know, uh, he was saying, I don't know. so like, don't spend too, all that you have, and don't be my Sally. You can't say you want to be generous, and you keep spending everything. You spend everything, what, what will you use to take care of yourself? And don't be my Sally. Don't say you will not spend to assist people. So there's a need for moderation in between the two. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have uh, we have two questions in queue. So which one from a sister and one from a brother. We hope you'll be able to answer it, just one of them in, within three minutes left. So how can, how can you again... So, sister, how can you regain your focus after undergoing a lot of frustration or stimulations that has made everything boring to you before? Okay, thank you. This one is it may not be something so so ordinary because what led into what, what led you to uh, frustration may be something that uh, requires you to see a counselor. It may be something that has some psychological dimension. So uh, it may not be one answer to it all. But regardless, we believe as Muslims in the efficacy of dua, in the efficacy of supplications. And I don't think we, uh, we can experience frustrations much as the Prophet of Allah experienced. And if you check through the stories of the Prophet in the Quran, you find so many very, very disturbing and terrifying situations they went through and the prayers they did and how Allah turned things to better for them. So you may, you may have to I mean, learn some of those prayers and say them times when prayer, when supplications are when dua are most when supplications are most accepted uh, times for acceptance of uh, supplications and that that spirit that may cure even that will, that spiritual approach will cure both the other, but to cure, cure the spirit, if there's underlying spiritual cause of that situation you find yourself, it will cure it, and it has the potency to even cure whatever other underlying causes, maybe psychological, maybe economical, maybe financial. It's, so the spirit, the, that work can play with the both sides. I hope that made the, the, the question I understand my point. So the, many of these do I will know them. So let's acquaint ourselves with them and say them from time to time. But if you have, if you feel strongly that it's something that may require you to see an expert, a counselor, a psychologist, or whatever, please do. May Allah is our face. That way you can start you can start on a very good note again and be focused in Allah. The second question. Yes, the second question. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the time is up now, so and we are meant to go strictly by instruction. We are given from 10.30 to 12. So, inshallah. So maybe we forward you to, through text and we answer that. No problem, inshallah. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan. Thanks all for attending. We thank Allah most. May Allah reward us all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.